we started with people and then we built a world around us. We have chairs because we have backsides. If we didn't have backsides, we would have nothing to sit in the chair and therefore chairs wouldn't exist. And so you have all these decisions that were made around our shape. And so it makes sense that if you're trying to have a robot use the world that exists the way that it does, uh, we want to have something that's about our shape and size. The original version wasn't very well designed uh, from a, a total energy consumption standpoint. Uh, and then removing those problems resulted in a system that looked a, a little bit like a bird. So birds may be more efficient in many ways than humans. Well, absolutely. I mean, they evolved to run way before people did. So, you know, birds are, you know, descendant of the avian dinosaur line. Certainly, if you look at an efficiency, an ostrich is way better at running than people, and people are already pretty good. don't want to do is have it appear that you can have a conversation with it when in fact that's just not what the robot's designed for. We want it to be able to communicate non-verbally. The goal is to have this work with people from different backgrounds, people from different countries. Did you fear that by making you know a head with facial expressions that you would freak people out? I, I think done poorly, yes. Robots that try to get into what the animation industry has called the uncanny valley, where you get kind of like people but it signals as very weird and sort of disconcerting. Uh, and that's why we stayed away from that entirely. This, this looks a lot more like a 1960s consumer product. Mm -hmm.